Hi, my name is Carrie Waltz. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I share tips, tools, and techniques for the artist in you. Today, I'm going to focus on something that has had a profoundly positive effect on my art. I have to thank Kathleen McElwain for sharing this with me. And she's an artist from Georgetown who invited me into her studio one day when my family were, was just walking the square and looking in windows and observing some of the art that we saw. And she invited us into her studio and showed us what she did. And it was my first introduction to a water brush or a quash brush, as some people call it. And I really had no idea at the time that learning about this tool and technique would take me places, would allow me to document my life, would give me something that I could pass on to my children as a recorded history. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen McElwain, for inviting me into your studio, showing me how the water brush works, and opening my eyes to something that I never thought that I would want to do. And before you say, oh, I don't want to do watercolor, take a look at what this does. If you're not a watercolorist, that's okay. I wasn't either when I started. And, you know, if there's, <laughs> there's no change without a change in routine. <laughs> and so I changed my routine and began to create more on a daily basis. I began to understand how this tool works and to use it. I then began to share it with students and then I began to teach classes with it and workshops and and it's taken me places that I never dreamed that I would be going and and I'm so ever grateful for for an artist taking her time to say hey you want to come into my studio so today I'm inviting you into mine come into my studio and let me show you what Kathleen McElwain showed me that first day and then for the next few weeks I'm going to take you on a journey to explore a little bit more what this water brush will do and invite you to join me on this journey. Day one, introduction on how to control the water. All you need is paints. This is a student grade set. I'll show you more about that in a little bit toward the end. It comes with its own brush and stopper. This is the only way I got the stopper. Um, when I opened up this set, it had its own brush right here and that brush works just fine. However, it does screw on backwards. So don't think it's defective. I thought it was and almost sent it back. The brush that Kathleen McElwain introduced me to was a Pentel Large. And if you can see how wonderful this tip is, it's teeny, teeny, tiny, but it has a wide base. These are nylon bristles. All of the water brushes, as far as I know, are nylon. But I really like having this stopper. So when I order this set, it comes with a brush that has a stopper. And so if I want to put water in this and I'm traveling, it's already loaded. And always put the lid on this when you travel because one time I didn't and it got tilted and bent up and I never got that bend back. So, okay, you have a water brush. It's like, oh, no water, what do I do? You can have a little pitcher that you can pour in, but you have to be very careful because you might spill. My favorite remedy for that is get a pipette. Just put it in the water container. I usually always carry a water bottle and then I can fill up my water brush without any problem. So that's very helpful. This is how it works. Brush is tilted. I have water flow. I want to paint a color. Maybe I want this reddish tone. I just go in the paint, dampen it. I paint a color. That was easy. Maybe I want a different color. Look, wipe it on a paper towel. Go get a different color. Paint it. Oh, really? That's all you do? Wipe it on a paper towel? Yes, that's all you do. Wipe it on a paper towel. It comes out clean. You're ready for another color. Oh my word, I can do that. I've even taught kids how to do this. Now, the worst thing about kids is they really like to squeeze the brush. So you can teach this to them if they can control a little self-control. And you might need that same kind of self-control. But just learning this made such a difference. Then I went home with the brush that I purchased from her and I started to play. Allow yourself time to play. I want you to understand when I started with watercolor painting, this brush is what I really started with. So I wasn't already accustomed to the natural bristles and other brushes that hold so much water and the traditional watercolor techniques of studio painting. I was going to do journaling 
because I was searching for something to do on the go. I mean, this solved all my problems. You will need your water brush, you'll need watercolor, you'll need watercolor paper, and a, I use a folded paper towel. You can use a terry cloth towel. There are sponges here, but I just found that the paper towel was better because it was white and I could tell when my paintbrush was clean. What Kathleen McElwain showed me was the very basics of how this brush works. And she knew I was an artist, so I could take it home and learn it more myself. So I bought a couple from her and uh, haven't looked back ever since. All right, so the very first time you use it, make sure water's coming through this channel. So you squeeze it a little bit. Make sure you see water on your hand or feel it. Okay, pick a color that you want to paint with. Uh, let's go with yellow. I like this yellow. Okay, so I'm going to put my brush in the yellow. If I know I want to mix it with something, I can squeeze a little water out and make a puddle here. Now I don't want any more yellow. I wipe it off. Notice I'm not squeezing my brush right now. I'm just letting gravity do that. And it wipes clean. When it's clean, I know my brush is ready to pick up another color. Hmm, let's go with orange. I've already put a drop of water in my orange so it was damp. But if it's not, you'll just have to squeeze a little water on there or spritz it if you want. So I'm just making some piles of paint. And I just did that by squeezing some out. This brush will suck up paint. And you don't want paint sucked up because as you use this brush, as you squeeze, the water goes out. But it has to breathe. So see, whoops, see the bubbles come in? When you let it, let the bubbles come back in, you don't want to be down in a puddle of paint because it's going to go and be in your brush. So then you'll have to empty it, rinse water through it a little bit. And that actually has never happened to me, but it has happened to some of my students. So make sure that every now and then, you know, when you don't have paint in your brush, that you just allow this brush to breathe and uh, you'll just be fine. All right, so I have two colors I want to paint with. All right, I'm going to paint a little sunflower. So I'm just going to pick it. Now I'm just picking this up. Yeah. Ooh, not very dark, so I'm going to mix these two together. Maybe it's not going to be a sunflower after all. It's going to be a flower. If I have too much paint on my brush, I just dab it. And I'm I'm painting flat right now. So if I had it tilted, it would it would be running a bit. And that's fine. I'm going to pick up a little green. This little green, that green is too garish. So I'm going to dilute uh modify it a little bit. I already have orange on my palette. Orange is close to a complement. So when you mix something close to a complement, it, uh, it's going to neutralize. So I'm just going to create this little flower. Notice I start with a point. I press it down. That gets it a little bigger. Dry it off. Wipe it off when I want to change colors. All right, I'm going to come back with some more intense orange while it's wet. And I think I'll even add some brown tones in there, make it a little darker. Maybe I want some streaks of orange. While it's wet, I can add some. If I want it thicker streaks, start straight in the paint. If you do something you don't like, wipe it off, and you can sometimes lift it back up. But pretty much something like this is what she showed me. A few minutes ago, I thought I had filmed how I did the fine lines on this drawing or this painting, and I didn't. Sorry about that. You can see how 
tiny, tiny, tiny those lines are, I did it with a Micron 05. So, because I quoted the quote, there's no change without a change in routine, I'm going to put that here. The first thing I do is I start off with a mechanical pencil or, or one that I can write lightly. If I want to put lines so that I'll make it straight, that's fine. Mm, I think I want no a little more strong. So I'm going to delete that. Close enough. So I'm going to get now a larger pen. I'm going to test this. I got, yeah, that's dark enough. Okay. I might not go exactly over my lines, but it'll be close. I'm looking at, uh, this isn't exactly lined up. I'm not going to shift it up here just a little bit so it's more even, but it's just for me. As I trace the lettering, I try to correct the spacing that I made when I wrote it in pencil. And when the pen dries, I'll erase the pencil so all you can see is the pen. Some of the most basic watercolor techniques are what I'm going to share with you next. And this will help you explore this brush in a new way because if you can control the water, you can control the brush. If you can control the brush, you can control where the paint goes. The first watercolor technique I'm going to show you is wet on wet. I take the water brush and I wet the paper. I want it so wet that it's shiny. I don't want puddles as in it's dripping down it's that much, but you can see that I have some shiny paper right here just up in this top corner. When I do wet on wet, I also want to work with wet paint. I already have some up there, but I'm going to pick a different color to make it a little easier for you to see everything. I'm just picking up some paint, putting it over here, adding some water to it. So wet on wet creates a soft, blurry look. So I'm going to hold this up so I can see where it's wet. Also, holding it up and tilting your paper will create runs in the direction of the angle. So it's fun to play with that. If you want some darker points in there, go back to your paint. Put in some heavier, thicker paint. And then, the hardest thing to do, leave it alone, let it dry. Because I'm impatient. I want to play. I want to see what it'll do. I still have some, oh, it's starting to dry. See how this corner isn't very shiny? If I put something there, it may be wet enough. That's wet enough. But see how that stopped? It's not going anywhere. Right here, it's a hard edge. So that means my paper is no longer really wet. So I'm going to wipe this off. If I want this to be a soft edge, I have to add a little water to it. Soften that. I'm going to add a little water on this side. Soften that. I'm going to leave that alone, wet on wet. Anytime you want a soft edge, a gradation of color, you want your paper to be wet. Okay, I'm going to take that same color. If I want it to flow a little, I want a, a little less flowy paint. A watercolor dries much lighter than when you put it down. So if I want to create a soft transition from dark to light, I need quite a bit of water in my paint because when I paint, I want a bead, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to lay this down. Okay, there's a bead, but it's not a very big bead, so I'm going to add more water. See, I'm squeezing. See, okay, now you see the bead? If I want this to be smooth, I want that bead. Okay, I still have a little bit of a bead here, and I can dry my brush. If I have too much of a bead, like if something's beading up down here like it is right here, I pick the paint, just dry my brush, and I can come back here and pick that up just a little bit. See, I have a little bead right there. I can pick that up. I leave it alone and let it dry. So if you want a soft transition, it's got to be wet enough for that bead. Okay, there's an oval. All right. While that's wet, I'm going to take my green. I don't want it really bright green, so I'm going to add just a little bit of that purple in there. And I want to fill that oval. I can't see it. Sorry, i got to pick. Let's see. 
I've lost my oval because I couldn't see it. Should have drawn it. All right, there's my oval. I'm going to dab that off. I'm going to pick up a darker green, a heavier, thicker green. And I'm going to pretend this is a watermelon. While this is wet, I'm going to go across the middle. I'm going to start uh, kind of bending out toward the outside edge. And I need to do this while it's wet. You want a variety of uh, thicknesses, so I'm barely touching the paper with my, see how tiny that pen is, tip is. Okay. We've got us a, ourselves a watermelon. One of the things I also knew was that I needed to give myself time to play with this new medium, with these new, with this, these new brushes and experiment. So I did not start off with trying to do anything intricate. And I made sure that the people around me, all my friends, my family, it's like, hmm, this is new to me. I am practicing. I'm going to play. Uh, I knew well enough not to try something difficult when I first started with this. So give yourself that permission to play. Give yourself permission not to make anything beautiful and noteworthy. Uh, design a, or set aside a notebook that's a learning notebook. And if you want to create a journal that has removable pages, I'll, uh, I'll put a video up here that shows you how I do that. Promise me you'll play, 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 and give yourself some grace as you learn. See you next week. Mm -hmm.